This is the second part of a video for patrolling helicopter pilots and crew, and we're going to discuss pre flighting a helmet and making sure that the helmet is safe to fly in. All right, the standard issue for a PHR right now is basically the SPH5 and all the variants. We make a very ver uh, similar version to this helmet, it's identical, uh, but we don't use the same name. Now, it all checks the same. First thing you want to do is when you grab the helmet, you want to look at it, and you want to check that everything is there. The first thing you want to check is for cracks. Now, the way we do this is we take the helmet while it's facing us and we squeeze it. When we squeeze it, we look right here to see if there's a crack. And if there is one, you can run your finger and you can feel it. So, let me show you a helmet and you can judge it for yourself. This helmet here, if you squeeze it, you can tell right here that there's a crack. You can see how it reflects. If you run your finger over it, you can feel the crack. Now this is a very common uh, occurrence with Gentex made helmets. Same thing on the other side. If you squeeze the helmet, squeeze it right here, you can run your finger, you can even feel a crack or there's no crack. And in this case, this one does not have a crack on this side. Second place you're going to find cracks is in this area right here. And same thing, squeeze the helmet and it'll flake out as far as if there's a crack here or of a crack here. If you have a crack in that helmet, the helmet is dead. Don't use it. Get with PHI's um, support team and they'll direct you to send the helmet in and we'll replace the shell. Now, the second thing to look for, and we've been finding a lot of these in line, is a soft shell. And what I mean by that is shells that were made, but they're basically elastic. Okay? That's not a proper shell. You're not supposed to be able to squeeze this thing like putty. Now, the way you can tell if you've got one of these shells is to take the helmet, and I'm using this one because it's all put together, at the ear cups, just squeeze. If you can squeeze that much into a helmet, especially here, if you can squeeze that much and then look inside the helmet shell, it should, it's probably yellow, which would be that color there, then you need to send that helmet in for repair because, again, the shell needs to be replaced. That, that's, that's not a safe helmet. Gentix will tell you it is, but it's not. All right, proper shell, and these are the shells that, that we make, they're, they're stiffer. They still have some elasticity to it, but you're not gonna be able to flex the ear cup the way you can on the other one. Remember, this one you can just one-handed, you can basically bend it. So that's an important feature to check for in your helmet. Next thing you want to look for is to make sure all the parts are there. So if you're missing your, your stop screw up here, you need to replace it. The stop screw, when you turn this, it comes to a stop so you don't lose the screw so you can lower your lens. While you're doing this, you want to go ahead and inspect the lenses. Make sure you don't have any gouges or cracks. So basically, take the lens, roll down the first one, and check the lens for clarity and cleanliness. This lens looks good. Take the next lens. Check the lock. Make sure that the pin inside of this is not bent. It should be straight. Squeeze it. And then pull it down so you can check the lens. Again, check the lens to make sure the lens is not scratched or gouged. Roll it up. The next thing we want to check is your ambus mount attachment. This is spring loaded. When I push it down, make sure it comes back up. If it doesn't come back up, it's because the spring lock inside was broken, and that can cause you to not be able to unlock your, your ambus mount. If you push it down too far, you can break it very easy. Uh, it's just a plastic lock that, when it's pushed down, it stops you. We see them all the time. All right, next thing. You want to check the edge beating of the helmet. Make sure that you have a proper edge beating all the way around the shell. Uh, that it's not coming loose or coming apart. If it's loose or whatever, you can try to glue it. If it's really bad, just uh, send it in and we'll replace the edge beating. It's no big deal. All right. Next thing we've been noticing a lot is worn out cross straps. Now, cross straps are these four straps that are inside of a helmet. These four straps should have electricity to it. If they're worn out, what happens is your ear cup doesn't tighten up around your head and then a lot of people start putting spacers on the ear cup trying to squeeze it in so you can hear better. You don't have to do that. 
these straps basically they do wear out in time and all you gotta do is just check them to make sure they're elastic. Push into them and if you can push them all the way down without hardly any pressure you need to replace them. Okay? And check them on both sides of the helmet. You have four cross straps, two per side in the helmet. Alright, next thing you want to check is the retention assembly. Make sure that your chin strap is, is not worn out. Make sure that the snap can be unsnapped. All right, check your chin strap pad. Make sure that it's intact. If you don't have a chin strap pad, order one because it does make your helmet more comfortable to wear. All right, and then the back of the nape strap, or retention assembly, excuse me, has a nape strap pad. Uh, this right here. This is another portion. Make sure that the buckle is still there. Make sure the strap goes through it. You need this to have a proper adjustment on the back of your neck so your helmet doesn't flop around. Also to stay on your head because this keeps it from rolling forward. All right, and then another thing you want to check is the styrofoam liner. You want to make sure that the styrofoam liner is clean. It's not googie yellow or whatever, uh, and you want to make sure that it's intact. If it's got any cracks or big dents, again, you want to replace it. Back of the helmet, same thing. Make sure that the uh, impact liner, as we call it, is also one piece intact with no cracks. All right, again, these are simple parts. All right, your comp cord. Make sure that it's going correctly, that this portion here is not cracked, that it follows through all the way to the mic, that the mic is adjustable. And you want to check inside the mic for these two little holes right here. Make sure there's a screw in there. If a screw is missing, it's going to give you bad comms because what's happening is it's not making contact with the, uh, with the microphone properly. So you want to make sure that those two screws are there. They do get loose, sometimes they get lost. That'll cause you to have bad comms. So if you've got a microphone that's misfiring, I guarantee you, if you look, you'll notice the screw's missing. Okay, easy fix. When you go to check the boom, make sure that the boom doesn't flop around because when you tighten it here, the boom should stay in place. This should have a little bit of play in it, but it should be snug. So if you adjust it and you put it in your mouth, it should stay there. It shouldn't fall, creep away, or whatever. So make sure that this is all correct. All right, your main com cord. Now this is something that we replace a lot of. Um, we find them sometimes that they're just abused. So, you know, cords um, are generally pretty good, they're pretty strong, and they should last you three, four, five years. I've seen some fail early, I've seen some that lasted even longer than that. Uh, all depends on who made them and how they're treated. So when you get the cord, make sure that the coil is just that, coiled, that it does the coil and it doesn't, doesn't be bleeded out. And then check the end of the cord, make sure your connection is there and that it's tight. A lot of people sometimes when they plug in the overhead of the helicopter, pilots are bad for this and I'm a pilot so I can say that. You know, they grab the cord and they, they'll yank it out because a lot of times it's cheaper once you get out of the aircraft they're going, oops, and they just pull it out instead of pulling it at the plug. Medical people are not so bad because they're in a cutter box and they're plugging into the carter box that's next to them. So usually we'll find more damaged cords for, from pilots or air crew that are sitting up front than people in the back. Uh, and once you do all that, last but least, the cleanliness of the helmet. If your retention assembly smells like goat hairs, you know, because you've been wearing it for so long and sweating in it, then you know, we need to clean it. So basically what we do is we remove from the helmet, we wash it, we put it back in the helmet, it's nice and clean. You don't want to be wearing a retention assembly that, that's actually growing things. And trust me, I've seen it. Um, and that should cover the uh, inspection of your helmet. Now one last thing that I think we didn't cover was your ear seals. Um, ear seals are inside the helmet. Make sure that the ear seals are properly there, that they're not loose, they're not hanging out, or they're, they're off. So the ear seals should always be in the helmet, okay? That's what's going to keep you, and give you the attenuation that you're looking for. All right? Now, we finished covering the pre-flight, so now let's grab just a couple of helmets and let's just go with a quick inspection. Now, just to let you know, I just grabbed two helmets that just came in. I haven't even looked at them, but we'll do that real quick with you here, and we're going to go do an inspection real quick. And just follow me through. All right, PHI helmet. First thing I noticed is the inside of the helmet. I can smell it. Uh, it's been sweated in repeatedly for a long, long time. It's dirty. It's caked on. You can see the chin strap pad. Um, if we set this in a black box at night, we could probably grow things in it. All right. 
needs to be cleaned. The uh, his liner, you notice it's all yellowish and all that. It's all dented and chipped. This liner needs to be replaced. His retention is or uh, his impact liner. All right, he's got an old TPL system from Gentex. Uh, that's pretty much done. Okay, impact liner. It's all yellowish, as we said. That needs to be replaced. All right, so let's check it for cracks. Now, this helmet has the start of a crack right here, but it's not enough for it to be replaced because it's less than a quarter inch. So we can live with that. So let's look at the back of the helmet. No crack there. Oh, okay. Here we have a big crack. This one is exceeding an inch. So this helmet here is condemned. We need to replace the shell because this crack will just keep growing. All right, and we'll continue on with the inspection. You notice the uh, edge beading. Edge beading is all cut up here. Uh, the other side is loose. This is what I'm looking at here, and this is what I'm trying to show you. Okay? All right, cross straps. These cross straps are dead. If you notice cross straps, there's nothing left in there. They're, they're loose, and there's no elasticity left in it. So that's pretty much done. Same thing on the other side. It's, it's, they're loose. All right. Lenses. Well, this one's missing the lens assembly altogether. So basically, I don't know what he's trying to do, but there's nothing holding the lens in. Okay. Uh, aside from that, his uh, lens lock, if you notice, is bent. Bent all the way out. Let's see with the camera. That's something grabbed that and pulled it. So that needs to be replaced. And we'll catch that when we do the refurb. Lens itself. Uh, hasn't been cleaned in a long, long time. And it's pretty rough on the inside. We'll try to clean it. If not, we'll have to replace it. And the lens, there's outer lenses on, is okay. Uh, a little cleaning on that one, we'll clean it up. And we can use that. Okay, his boom. His boom seems to be okay, but the mic cover, you know, that's, that's roughly a $6 part. If your mic cover looks like that, if you go to, to your supply officer or even call your PHI maintenance people, they'll be more than happy to, to give you that little part. I mean, we sell them to them all the time. So, and then the microphone is a little loose. And then checking on the inside, both screws are there, so that's okay. All right, checking the back of the helmet. Uh, everything seems to be okay here. And now uh, checking the cord. The cord is definitely worn out. I can tell because if you notice, uh, the coil is very loose. And if you follow down, you see how limp it is. This cord here has had a lot of abuse on it. So this comm cable, of course the helmet, you know, it's got some usage, so that's not surprising, but even the, the cover is pretty much worn out. It's very loose, doesn't even grab anymore. So this helmet basically, um, aside from the retention assembly, pretty much everything with the exception of the visor cover needs to be replaced. Alright, let's take a look at another helmet. There's another helmet that just came in. This one is missing the visor lock knob and lock nut. Well, there's a washer, there's a, there's a nut, and then the stop screw. It's all missing. So in other words, he's got no way of keeping this lens up. And then again, this could be a very easy fix. Spring load is okay. This pin is bent, the pin in here, so we need to replace the latch. His lenses in itself look pretty good. All right, again, the liner is good, but his comfort liner is trashed. Uh, it needs to be washed or cleaned. But if you can tell the liner is still white, and there's, it's okay on the damage, he's got little nicks in it, but nothing really heavy. 
no big dents that I can tell. Same thing on the back, it's fine there. Retention assembly could have been cleaned. His cross straps on this one again are worn out. If you notice how loose they are, you can actually jiggle them. Alright, so let's look at the edge beading. Edge beading seems to be okay. Microphone, two screws are in, but the boom it seems to be tightened. Cord has a decent coil to it. And if you notice, it's not as limp as the other one. So this cord is actually a little bit better. We'll check the cord when we do a final check on it. I think we refurbish it. Uh, one thing I did notice is he has his ear cups sideways. Now, the reason he did that is because of the cross straps. He wasn't getting enough pressure, so he turned them sideways so he can get a little bit more across the ear cup. You don't need to do that, guys. Just buy the parts you need. So they will straighten that out. The tension assembly needs to be cleaned. Chafing pad behind the cross straps are uh, worn out. You can tell, you can see all the holes in it. And outer shell looks fine. It's got nicks in it. But these nicks are basically just scratches. You can always tell once you take the liner out to do an inspection whether there's a crack in the shell itself. But it's rare that we find a crack here in this model helmet. Now there's another helmet that's made by Gentex, uh, which we find cracks appear all the time because it's not built as strong. But they're aware of it, so is the Army, so that's their problem. Okay, other than that, this helmet uh, just needs a good refurb, recleaning, but it does need to be replaced as far as the shell. So costing this helmet won't be as bad for a refurb. All right, one more helmet we're gonna check. Oops. This one has got elastic problems. So this helmet shell, just by the fact that we can squeeze it and stretch it, uh, is going to be replaced. Edge beading is fine, which doesn't matter now anyway because we're going to replace the shell. But so let's look at the other parts. Latch is okay. Lens comes down. Uh, it's got a minor scratch, nothing worth replacing. It's just going to scratch again if we do. He's missing his his nut up here for the stop screw. So we'll have to replace that. His outer lens looks pretty good. Uh, again, just a minor scratch, not enough to justify replacement. Lock works on the ambus mount. No major damage to the helmet shell here. Uh, but it, like I said, it doesn't matter, it's, it's gone. All right, we're checking this cabling. Cabling seems to be fine. Microphone has both screws in it. And then we check the cable itself. Cable here seems to be dented, but that, that happens all the time, so that, that's no big deal. But the, the coil is tight, so the cord itself is fine. And again, that doesn't drop like the other one does. So this cable still has a lot of life into it. Um, cap is tight. So it just needs to be checked on the comm bench, and whether or not we work it or not depends on how the test goes. Now, uh, that's pretty much the pre-flight, if you notice the missing screw, um, there's people at your bases that are very familiar with the, with the helmets, and you know it doesn't cost them anything to fix it. Hey, John, replace the screw. Hey, Mike, replace this for me. And then PHI and Lafayette has support up there, so they can do, you know, a lot of repairs there, the cross strap repairs, liner replacements, and all that. It's basically, simple stuff in a helmet. When you need to do major repairs, like replace the shell or, or something else. They use us, we service their helmets, we turn around, we check them, replace whatever parts need to be replaced, and when you get back, basically a new helmet if it's uh, in these conditions. Okay, so we refurbish the shells, and then we do all new parts that need to be replaced. If you have any questions on your helmet, take a picture of it, send it to me if you've got any questions as far as if this is bad or, or this is good, and we'll be more than happy to take a look at the picture you sent, and we'll let you know what to do, and who to contact for replacement, okay? Thanks for checking out our video, and this again is Ron at Helicopter Helmet. Thanks a lot.